Hello, for this video I'm going to be deriving a female hair, and I will also be showing a bit about the XRF linking for textures. And I've already hit derived and loaded it in the editor here, so I have a little outfit put together. And as you can see, I actually have a drop down list on the side here, and this is how you can actually edit the linking between the XRFs. And you actually have to do this through the settings. It will be in Creek here, and you have to check mark that, and you may have to restart to actually see that. But once you have that available, you can actually do things like unlinking the textures. As you can see with this hair texture, if I were to color it, it would go over the entire part, like all the blonde parts would be colored, whatever new color I put in. With the XRF, though, you can actually unlink that, and I'll be showing you how to do that. But first, let's start making a texture. So I'll go to File, New, and 256 by 256. And I actually want to go, I think, with a gray color, like a blue-gray. So go down to there. I'll put that to fill the selection. Go to Layer, New Layer. OK. Let's get some dark color in there. And whoop, other way. Let's go turn that layer to soft light. And turn that down a little bit. And you can pretty much do whatever you want to get the effect you want. You can usually add little streaks and everything too. I'll go to soft light for that. Filters, blur, Gaussian blur. Unlink the side there. Turn the X to zero. Turn up the Y. And just keep turning it up. And now I got some strands there. I'll reduce that a little bit. Make that a bit less. And it's always good to try it on, too, because uh, the way hairs are mapped, they're often different, so you can usually get quite a different look. Uh, sometimes you can't really use the same hair texture for everything. Sometimes you have to uh, make it smaller, make it larger. I'm going to put a bit more jitter on this and a bit more spacing. And this is the aspect ratio. That's what makes the brush thinner like that. And I'll just... Add some more like that, and for some variation, I think I'll actually add a bit of a blue in there as well. Set that one to soft light as well, a little bit lighter, and then the Gaussian blur again. And around the roots, I want to add a bit more darkness, so add a bit of black there. And just kind of go back and forth a bit. There's blur, Gaussian blur, a bit to the Y. I'm going to leave the X a little bit blurry too. And just adjust the opacity of that a bit. Create another new layer. You can also use noise. I tend to not use that so much. I find that it can look a little bit uh, pixely. It depends a lot on your graphics card too, though. And add that to soft light as well to get a bit of highlight in there. Okay, so let's see how that looks for now. Quickly export that and my hairs folder. Oh, there it is. And that blue gray. And so I'll load that into the editor here. Oh, where's my folder? <laughs> Oh, 
and hit apply changes. And as you can see, the blue gray color is now completely <laughs> covering um is now completely covering the hair. Uh some people like to add a bit of a part there. Uh it's pretty good, but you kinda have to work on matching the skin tones. What I actually like to do is to go to another new layer and make this really small. Right at the edge here. And again, it depends on your hair because they look different on different people. And you might want to make it just specifically match the skin tones you like or try and make it more average to fit more. But I usually just like to add a little bit of highlight there. I'll blur it slightly, just the Y. And if you hit Control F, you can actually repeat the blur. And actually want a little bit more in there. Eh, spacing's a little bit too much. Okay, if you hit Control shift e you'll get your export menu again, but you can also just hit Control e and I'll just export it over write the same file so you don't have to keep going into your folder each time. So I'll upload the edited image now. And as you can see, the roots have a bit more highlighting there now. Let's say I don't want the entire hair to be blue-gray like this. I want to add some other streaks and everything. You can add streaks to the textures, but there's also another way you can go about doing this, which is with the XRF editing. As you can see, all these are named 00.jpg, 00.jpg. What you can do is actually select from the drop-down list and click a new one, hit Apply Changes, and you'll have a blank XRF here. <laughs> Doesn't exactly look that nice right now, so what we'll have to do is actually load in another texture. And I'll go to New from Visible, and let's say I want this to be a bit lighter, so I'll duplicate that layer by hitting Control shift d and hit Screen, so I get more silver one, and I'll double it again, so now it's a really light shade, so I'll hit Control shift e to export that, and I'll put down light blue-gray. Export that. Now I can import that into here. And now it's got the different streaks here. You can actually do this for quite a few different things as well. Um, as you can see, the, you get like the pixels there, I guess, because it has a few things like that. So I might want to edit that a bit. Um, I actually think I want to leave this as a blue-gray one. So you actually have to remember which name it is. This one's just got the <laughs> big number sequence there. So it's kind of hard to tell which one's which until you actually put them on. But you can actually always like revert it back as well. And let's see if that one looks better. So I'll hit that one to be the blue-gray. And that just gives me a couple streaks. I think that's more what I want. So I'm just going to edit this a little bit more to make it blend in a bit better. Now using this method, it does entirely depend on how the mesh is actually uh, mapped. Some people do different mapping, so you might not be able to get the same effect. Oh. 
I'm going to make that a little bit darker. And overwrite the file. Reload that. And I like how that blends a bit better now. I also want to remove the little pumpkins here. It's not really Halloween anymore, although they are really cute. So I'm going to go into my pictures, get my small black opacity. It's just uh, two pixels by two pixels in black. Press apply changes. Now I've got rid of the little pumpkins. And what I can do to save on KBS even more is to use this file name. So it's the female set quest over here. Hit apply changes. And now I loaded it in without having to add a new opacity. Um, the light gray hair you'll also see doesn't have an opacity there since it's its own new XRF file. For this particular mesh, it actually tapers off pretty nicely there, so you might not even need one. I think I'll use one just, oh, yep, see, because you got a little bit of a square in there. So I actually already have some made, so I'll go to my hair folder. I can just click one of these. You don't really need to make anything too fancy for a basic hair opacity. And I think I'll need something that's a little bit more to match the rest of this hair. And I might have to make a new one. So, file, new, 256 by 256. Fill that in white. Layer, new layer. It's black. this a bit bigger, and just go back and forth. The jitter does most of the work for that. And now I've got a quick hair opacity. Control shift E. I'll just give it a quick name just so I remember which one it is. Let's go with this gray hair I'm doing. And now it matches a bit better. And for this one, I actually chose a different one. So I have to actually find out which one it is to revert it. <laughs> ah, that's not it. That's why it's a little bit trouble if people don't actually give them names to remember which one's which. <laughs> Oh, I think that's the one I wanted. Well, maybe not. <laughs> I'll just maybe load in my own one. And this will actually apply to the other back ones as well, so... It could be a little bit of a struggle doing this stuff. You kind of have to give it a bit of trial and error with hair opacities like this. <laughs> and also, I don't typically make too many female hairs, to be honest. <laughs> I usually like to focus on my male stuff. Okay, well, I like how that's starting to look now, so I think it's ready for upload. Uh, before you do upload, always go to the assets, and as you can see, there's a couple unused assets. That's because I doubled the uh, XRF file, so you can actually remove the unneeded ones. Press Apply Changes, Save. That way you can reduce on KBS, and also get a bit more of a different style if you want. So all you have to do now is just basically upload as usual. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new today. Happy creating!